Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video for those of you that have been asking, can you use plans to cut parts on something like a laser engraver and cutter? The answer is yes, you definitely can. So I thought it'd be useful to make a video to show you how I've done it. Now, plans like this are available in lots of different places. I'm sure many of us have got paper plans around. This one just happened to be one I pulled from the central part of rcm &E magazine. But being able to accurately cut bits of bass and balsa wood in order to build models is one of those things that can take an awful lot of time. But with a laser engraver, it can be dramatically speeded up and be far more accurate. So if this is a question you're interested in, stay tuned. I'll take you through how I do it here. Now, if you have a paper version of the plan, this is a little bit more complicated because we need some kind of graphic that you can port into the software that's going to run the laser to tell the laser where to cut the lines. If, however, the plan has come as an image, i.e. a JPEG or a PNG, then it gets an awful lot easier. So with my particular setup here, I'm going to have to scan in the parts that I'm interested in in order to then use them within the Lightburn software to actually cut the piece that I want. So I scan this piece of paper with a regular office scanner, the kind of things that sits on top of a multifunction printer. Um, you may even have one at home in your home office. And the trick for this is, if there is an option to increase the resolution of the scan, go for the maximum resolution. And if there's an option to save it as a graphics file, like a PNG or a JPEG, choose that as well. And once you've got that file, then it's a case of just cleaning it up to make it as clear, as crystal clear as possible. Because we want the lines as easy to spot for light burn as we possibly can. So what I did is I imported it into a graphics editor and did some basic editing. I straightened up the image using the straighten tool because it wasn't sat completely square on the bed of the scanner when I scanned it. Then I also used the crop tool to just cut out the piece that I'm interested in. And then I also used the level, but you can also use something like the contrast and brightness tools to make it as clear as possible where the lines were on the piece of paper. Now there are lots of different graphics editors around. Some of them are completely free. One's called GIMP, G-I-M-P. Bit of a weird name, but that's a great, powerful graphics editor that costs you absolutely nothing. Now we've got that image, we can jump onto the laptop and we can import it into Lightburn and trace it so it's ready to cut. So now we have the image that's reasonably clean. And again, you wouldn't have to go through all of those steps if the thing had been given to you uh, either as a PDF or as a JPEG or a PNG or something else. If it came in electronic form, then you can just use those plans directly. That stuff we've just done is because it came in paper. Now, what we can do now is import that picture here into Lightburn. So we're going to File, Import. We'll go onto the desktop and we'll import that scan. And there is the scan. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to say Trace Image. And that is the lines that it's going to trace. And what we're going to do is we're looking to play with each of these so that we're going to get close. Say OK. So now we'll just get rid of the image and we'll have a look. And what we ended up here is we've actually ended up with a double line around the individual pieces that we want to cut. So we have to decide whether or not we want to cut on the inner line or the outer line. And I would probably go for the inner line. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of those and we're going to say on group. And now that will allow us to pick the one line that we're interested in, which is that piece there. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete, select it all, hit the delete key, everything else. Now, as I select this piece again, we can set the width. Now we've measured that on the plan and we know it's 151 millimeters long. So that is now, hopefully, the right size that we're about to cut. So we need to set this in the place where we want it cutting. And we also need to set the speed and the power that's going to be used. Quick preview, just to check how that's gonna work. 
click play. So this is what the laser is going to do. So now we have the job ready. It's popped down to the laser and quickly run it. And let's see how close we get. So now we've got the job ready and we've got the settings all done for a cut for some simple wood. I then do the standard setup. First of all is slide the head over the piece that I'm going to cut from, use the tool to set the focus height, then push the head into the zero position, the front left position, which is for the Sculpt Front S10, and then use the framing command on the light burn just to move it around so I can see exactly where it's going to cut. Once I'm happy, I press the cut button and away it goes. And once it's finished, you end up with a piece that you're interested in. Now, I have got air assist on and that pushes air out around the laser. So it's quite important when you're cutting things like wood to have that turned on. It gives you a much better piece with less charring and burning. Uh, and the, the finish on it is absolutely fantastic. Checking it against the piece, uh, it's pretty bang on. I could have made it a little bit bigger and more robust by choosing the outside of those two lines, but I find that this way is a great way to do it. It's also quite a cute way if you already have a piece that you want to replicate, you can actually scan it on the scanner and then increase the contrast again in the graphics tool and then get light burn to trace around the outside of that piece that you already have to create a duplicate. And that's a great way to make a spare if you don't have a plan handy. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are interested in this. Uh, these kind of hobby grade lasers, which are great for engraving, are also fantastic for stuff like this. But of course, you don't have to make the pieces out of basswood or balsa wood. You could also essentially cut stuff like this out of acrylic and other materials as well, such as the power of the laser. All you do is just either increase the power or decrease the amount of time the or the speed the laser's moving, or increase the number of cuts. So you can make parts and replace parts that are maybe turning to be very brittle into something that's a little bit heavier and a little bit stronger too. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.